should be accountable to the people. We are saying that since first subsidy was removed, the federal government, state government, and local governments are smiling to the banks without any commensurate improvement in the lives of our people. What we're asking the government to do is to sponsor a bill and enact a law to provide security for our people. Because what we are talking about, when you are talking of the security in Nigeria, we only address physical insecurity, whether we should have enough police, uh, personnel, and gadgets for them. What of social security? If young people are not productive, if they are not meaningfully engaged, they will take to crime. Are they trying to deafen us? All right, welcome back. Yes, indeed, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the issues raised by several members of the society about what they feel with the economy. Well, this morning, as you may have seen, we're joined now by well, he's, he's a senator, but he's an ambassador as well, former Nigeria's High Commissioner to Ghana. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Mr. Shimbale. Mm -hmm. Great to be with you. Good to Mokwe. see you. Good to see you too, sir. Well, uh, it turns out that at this point in time, the people are feeling the economic pinch. Uh, they just want that, in spite of uh, the policies that may have been put in place or being planned at the moment. Many say they're not feeling it. And uh, of course, you're, you're in the country too, and um, you heard a lot of some of these comments. They're rightly placed, aren't they? Thank you for inviting me, uh, Shimbali. And uh, thank you, Mokwe, for having me. There is no doubt in my mind that some of these noise that we are hearing across the country are genuine. There's no doubt in my mind that some of them are genuine. But we have to be sincere with ourselves. The logical question to ask is, are we taking the right steps to get ourselves out of this? If you ask me, at the moment, the answer is yes. And when I was in the university as a freshman, we were taught something that I can never forget in management 101. That a bad decision is better than no decision. That is, if you take a bad decision, you have the opportunity to improve on it, jettison it, or do whatever is needed to make it right. But when you don't take decisions at all, you are not doing anything. And definitely you can't put something on nothing. Now, is the noise genuine? As I've said, it is genuine. But I also ponder on so many other things. That what? How did we even get here to begin with? Why should the Aula Wars regime in the 50s be the gold standard of governance in Nigeria? It's a question that I think we need to address ourselves to. And let me use an analogy that I experienced on my way coming to your office, to your station this morning. I was approaching the flyover to turn into your office. It was not a traffic jam. It was a gridlock, complete gridlock. And we saw two traffic officers trying to control the traffic. But the, tra the road users were not listening to their instructions. Hence, we couldn't find a way to go. Now, the, uh, some gentlemen, soldiers, came down from their vehicle to assist. Nigerians were still reluctant to follow their instructions. It took us almost about 20 minutes. If I didn't leave my house on time, I'll be late for this program. But as you have said, as a former ambassador, I'm accustomed to get, getting somewhere earlier than given. So that that way, you can settle down and be ready for whatever it is you've gone there to do. How does it relate That's, with this? It, because the indiscipline that has permeated the society is why we are where we are today. How? Serious indiscipline. God, God bless you. Now, if we do things 
in the normal fashion that things are supposed to be done, things will go the appropriate way. But when you have a society that is bedeviled by corruption and indiscipline, the two are serious issues. Indiscipline is one of the reasons why our social values have disappeared. That is why you will see children on the street having nothing to do. When we were growing up, practically almost all of us were in school. Majority of Nigerian children today are not in school. Now, on, on top of that is the fact that since 20, let's say about 10, 15 years ago, the present generation have not seen anything. Those who are growing up now, they have not seen anything but violence all over the country. What is that suggesting? And that's all they know. We have a, a, a portion of this country that they, have, they don't know anything but disorderliness. But violence. I, 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 I hear you quite all right, but isn't this tantamount to passing the buck? Because how does, uh, not justifying the discipline though, but how does the action or inaction of the citizens stop them from having uninterrupted power supply? Thank you very How much. does it improve the value you. of the currency? How does it ensure that production is a norm and companies not live in the country? How do all those things add up? Uh, Chamberlain, I'm not a professor in economics, and I'm not a professor in anything. By, but experience of life has taught me, because I'm a grassroots person. I'm not just somebody who is seated up there and looking down to understand what is happening in Nigeria. I relate and interact daily at all levels. Yesterday, I was discussing to a market, I was going with a market woman, the price of beans, the gari, and I do this regularly on my own without being prompted. It has a lot to do with it. When one man sits in his room because he has stolen or acquired billions of naira and he wants to make free money, he will sit in his house and call BDC, the bureau they change all over the place. You, you, you have naira and you have dollar, yes. Uh, how much are you selling? I'm selling it to 1,100. You know what? I will buy it at 1,200. You are buying volume. Then that one will start calling all the other BDCs. He will not be able to meet that demand. He will start calling the other BDCs who have dollars to bring them at 100 naira over the prevailing uh, uh, price. And then who will not rush for that but free money? Are the authorities wait, wait, helpless? Wait. Well, they are not. That is why, let me tell you, but are we helping them? You see, the situation we are now has come to a situation where everybody must pull their weight. You cannot leave everything to government. We have left so much to government, we, this is the result. It's only a madman that will do one thing the same way over and over again and expect a different result. We have allowed government to control everything. It's about time that citizens should also put their weight. When I was growing up in our community, we have community leaders. We have leaders that we look up to. We have leaders that your parents will tell you. In my own case, people like uh, late Justice Leslie Elias, Alaji Femi Okunu, uh, late Alaji Waid Elias, Justice Dosumu. Those ones were the people that grew up in our neighborhood. Those are the people that our parents will use as a good example. It wasn't as if there were no bad eggs. At that time, we had Shiko, Salau, and a host of other bad elements in the society. But they always tell you that going the path of these people is the noble thing to do, not going the other way. So, but in Nigeria of today, everybody is on his own. You don't have that kind of community. Because government is not doing anything for people. Anymore. It's, that is what I'm saying. American President John, late John F. Kennedy said, Ask yourself what you can do for your country or not what you That's can when do. the country is responsible. And wait, wait, wait. I'm not passing the buck. I have said we cannot continue to do. The government has failed in certain areas. That does not mean that citizens cannot help to ensure that the government do listen and do. And we have a listening government. Everything, that is why people are saying that they are making mistakes. Because it's a listening government, a government that is ready to take chances and then listen to people to make corrections to ensure that right things are done. That is the government you have in place now. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a long history. I mean, your relationship with the APC, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at 
you know, coming from the days of PDP and, and ACN in Lagos. I mean, you ran to be governor of Lagos State on Absolutely. the platform of the PDP. Right. And you were one of the juggernauts who really fought the current president, uh, you know, and his party in, in Lagos State. It's interesting now that, you know, you're now on the same side singing the same songs. But, how you know, this is where we all are now. It, it, it doesn't discriminate. Whether you're in PDP or in APC, if you're going to the same market, no one's going to ask you your party card before they, they sell anything to you. Um, and some of the things that you have complained, and when you're in traffic, they, they don't make way for you if you're in APC or you're in PDP. Everybody is in that, everybody is stuck in that traffic, experiencing the indiscipline which you have described so vividly. Um, but some people will say that we're where we are because over the years, we've let these values erode. And that's why people have craved a change of government. Um, eight years ago, the APC came on the platform of change, promising to do everything differently. Uh, shortly after they got into power, they started, the campaign change to change begins with me. Um, that was their own way of trying to seek the support of the masses that perhaps we can't do this alone. But what a lot of people complain of and still complain of today is that the language which they speak, <clears throat> excuse me, is, 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 more, is more speak, is more talk than action. They say one thing and seem to be doing something else. Uh, that they, they don't quite see that, they understand that the times are tough it, in terms of the body language, in terms of what it is that they do. For instance, the president's cabinet is said to be, you know, is said to be really large, which is not reflecting the, the, the times that we're in, the policy choices, um, simple things that could en encourage us to buy the Naira, to grow the Naira. There are very few governors who do it. I'll give you an instance. The governor of Ogun State from Ibikulia Muslim, we've been seeing them wearing Adire. And I think that, that sends a message to the people of the state mm -hmm. that this fabric is what we want to promote in the state. But what are the other things that we're doing nationally that shows that we want to focus more on businesses in-house to help grow this economy? Well, let me thank you, uh, Mope, because you and I are from Lagos. And the struggle for the soul of Lagos is not the same as the national issue that we are confronted now. I may have had a different part in terms of how do we move Lagos at that time. That explains why the disagreement was so tough at that time. But what we are facing today, even from what you have said, you can see that a repeat of the same thing will also be a failure, either directly or indirectly. A, a the last of, of the same thing. Oh. We, have, we are all in agreement that as a nation, we are not doing well. That, that I think there is nobody who is saying we are where we are supposed to be. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. Even a madman on the street is probably receiving less help that he was getting before now. And I hate to call names, but in 1984, Immediate past government took over government from the likes of Alaji Jakonde, Jifa Jashin, Abu Bakarimi, late Abu Bakarimi of Blessed Moment, also late Bolaige and, and a host of others who today we can still make reference to their achievements in government. In fact, Quite a number of people who are doing well today in Nigeria, young men, yeah. attended schools, the opportunities, let me just not limit it to school, the opportunities that made, they made possible. Last week, the president came to Lagos to come and commission Red Line. This Red Line is something Elijah Jack on the Will have completed over 40 
close to 40 years ago, we would have been talking about something different. Somebody came in, stopped that, pulled all of them into prison, and came up with a, 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 what we can call trade by butter. At that time, returning us to those dark ages when businesses were conducted in that manner. And all of a sudden, Nigerians decided that it is that same person they wanted to lead the country. I knew at that point we were going to run into trouble. Even President Basanjo that supported said, I know he can do security, but international politics and uh, economy. But the current president wait, didn't think so at the time. Wait, wait, wait. I'm coming to something. I would learn to where you want me. I, know, I will tell you what you want to hear. Then became president. For six months, there was no government at all. The first thing they did was to say, okay, if you have a uh, domiciliary account, you can't take your money out. Immediately, they, wake, they woke up, and those Nigerians who have saved money in their own country saw the opportunity to remove their money from the system. What did they do? Everybody took their money out of the country. And we had a lot of dollars before. Now, when Nigerians on their own, see, I love the spirit in which Ashwaju is trying to pursue everything. He's not leaving any stone. Any opportunity, you see him there, you see how he can correct the situation. Because he knows that we are in a very dire situation. And all of, you have a president who is different, who is thinking, who is looking at different manners, different approach to things. A man who, are, who developed young talents. I am one of them. I'm proud to say that. Yeah, I've had my issues with him. No doubt about that. But that impacted my life in a positive manner in terms of uh, management of things and the way I, I interrogate issues, I can't take that away from him. Yeah. And so, wait, wait, wait. And now he's been here at the Sadhu for about nine months now. And if you look, we were at the point of collapse economically when he took over. And what are the challenges to me, the priority now, which is the solution you are talking about? I see a situation where we must get this security thing right. There's no two ways to it. We have food in Nigeria now. We are talking about poverty. If hunger joins poverty, everything will go gaga. Because if people get hungry, and there's a little money that can't even find anything to buy. We'll be in worse trouble. Now, in order not to get that, that security aspect must be dealt with seriously. You were Minister of Defense. Yes. I, I, I will certainly take you up on, on the issue Minister of security. Of defense. Yes, you and Minister then of I, I spoke so about you, poverty. Least, yes, so you certainly have an idea. I mean, of some of the challenges that have bedeviled us, because these security challenges didn't, Definitely. didn't start today. So you must have been privy to, you know, a few things that we've been doing before. Maybe uh, we can strengthen, uh, et cetera. But what I'm asking you, uh, what, what, the question I was asking you was in terms of the communication. Do you think, because for some people, they think that this is still business as usual in terms what? of how government is still run, mm -hmm. in terms of the lack of transparency, in terms of, I mean, the president went to Qatar to talk about how um, <clears throat> he intends to fight corruption to a standstill and anybody who, you know, tries to take a bribe, um, you know, will, they should report them to him or something to that effect. That, that was what he said in Fire Away Qatar. But every day we see reports of corruption here within Nigeria. It doesn't seem like anything is really changing. See, what me, I would rather want the president to do. It's not to fight corruption to a standstill, but to reduce corruption to the barest minimum. There is no society where corruption does not exist. And I will want a situation which he has also demonstrated of recent, where bad behaviors are punished. If you do the crime, you do the time. Just recently, for the first time in a long time in our country. I think the last time 
we saw a president sacking a minister was under Obasanjo during that uh, National Assembly and the minister, then Minister of Education, if you recall. Immediately, the issue of sleaze broke out. The first thing he did was to suspend the executive secretary of that agency involved, and also the minister was also asked to vacate. The investigation is taking away forever. It's not. You see, I you just read. Here? I just read in the papers yesterday or day before yesterday that the, the committee shared by the minister of uh, finance that he has submitted a report, which I do believe, if you look at the schedule of the president, you and I will agree that he has been all over the place for the good of Nigeria, and getting to also attend to all important issues when you are sitting there takes some time. And I believe very shortly that also will be dealt with. You talk about transparency. I think we have passed laws to ensure transparency in government. But the political will to ensure that these things are properly activated what is lacking. And I do believe in good time, the president will summon that courage to ensure that things are done for every Nigerian to see and believe. Because if we do government in closet, the deficit of confidence that we have will continue to be there. And when you have deficit of confidence in your own people, that's a serious problem. Speaking about confidence, yes. there are a few things that are not clear to a lot of Nigerians. I don't know if you've got insight, maybe you could speak to us. Mr. Fadana, for instance, has asked the government to clarify whether or not they have reintroduced petrol subsidy because the president did say at the time it was going to a cabal. There were certain people who were stealing and all sorts of things. But I don't know, is there anyone who is facing the music now? as part of those who were the subsidy thieves, so to speak, but we haven't heard anything. If you heard, maybe you could tell us. Well, I'm not in government. My party is in government. But I do know this. I listened to Mr. Falano before we came on. He talked about the uh, National Assembly enacting laws to ensure food security. I think we have laws governing that space. What is truly lacking, as I've said to you, you need, you come, you do come to Lagos often and to some southwest places of Nigeria. If you see the influx of young men who eat at all, were on their farms, farming, in droves, now driving Okada for living, you will know how painful it is to confront the situation that we have in Nigeria today. I look at all these things objectively. I don't look at them as a party man. If you look at these things as a party person, you will not have a grip of the challenges ahead. And I'm speaking to you as a Nigerian, not as a politician. Where things are wrong, I'm trying to define them. And where things are right, I'm also trying to define them. Solutions is what we need. And my take on solution, immediate solution, which is possible, which she, she alluded to about my experience as Minister of State, the Minister of Defense. This banditry, terrorism, kidnapping. It's painful for somebody of my background when I look at it and they are still prevailing as if we, we, we don't know what we are doing. The government is too slow to respond not, to that. It's not, you see, you, we cannot put all this blame on, on a new administration. That's what I'm telling you. 
these things should have been stopped before now. Yeah, but, but there they, was no political will. But the government knew to what do it. it was, and they said, don't worry, we, we will we, fix we, it. We, they are already fixing it. How? Mm -hmm. God bless you. What they are trying, now they are, well, I don't want to speak to some of the things that the security people are doing. Among them, which we all saw last week, was the arrest that the NSA made of those foreigners who were also helping to devalue our currency to crypto coins and other illegal manners. That is an evidence that this is a government that is working. Now, on the side of the security, we have seen, maybe you have not, because sometimes security around us, you can't see them. It's only those who can keep their ears to the ground. That we are here, you and here are seated there, enjoying ourselves. Some people are ensuring that. It's not happening by accident. But the only time we shout security is when there is a failure. But for one failure, I am because I'm coming from that background, I read Administration of Justice. I worked as a probation officer in the U.S. when I was in university. I also worked in the social service in the city of New York for about two, two and a half years. So I do know a lot when it comes to security. And but Senator, you also know so that some of lot people who pay taxes expect happening. those officials to do the job for which they are being paid They are paid doing for. the job. I'm not, you see, where they fail, we will knock them. But where they are doing well, yeah, we must encourage them. All I am telling you is that a lot is happening around you now that you cannot see. And I can assure you that all those uh, uh, pockets of this or of that that we are seeing, some might be sponsored, some might be political. You mean the, the protest? I said some. No, no. no the, 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 Which ones are the, sponsored? I'm, I'm talking about some of the the, 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 the inflammatory talk about ah, the economy is too bad, the country is bad, everything is bad. Those infl inflammatory comments might be sponsored and might be political. Because after all, we are in politics. And we are not in a society where when a new government comes in, the opposition for one or two years will give space that is done in the Western world mm -hmm. to showcase what they have capacity to do. And in two years after, then they start another round of uh, electioneering campaign and now speak to issues on things that were supposed to be done that are not done, on promises made that were not fulfilled. But you don't from day one. And don't also let us forget. You say we all the from three day major, one. All the three major <laughs> candidates of the opposition Senator, also campaigned people, on the same policies. A number of people will disagree with policies you. They will disagree with you first. That the president is working on. Yeah. Well, 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 that is why we are here. Uh, yes. It's about disagreeing I know that I to agree. Is, uh, is going to come in. But I mean, you talked about how uh, this voice of opposition. Some people will say the current economic situation where... I didn't in. limit it to the voice of opposition. Okay. I said some. I'm not saying all. You, see, okay. we, you cannot discredit everybody. Discredit... Like, Fala is not a politician. So, I cannot just paint everybody the same color. Yeah, and I never did. Say the, the economy is such that, I mean, you, do, you don't need any soothsayer to tell you that it's, it's pinching everybody. And maybe what those people are actually as, doing and, is giving voice. Are solutions being proffered? Yes. The president, in his first inaugural address, said, I have seen that subsidy is killing our economy. I'm taking it off. I have seen that subsidy on dollars is... Okay, the so idea so of somebody you, today, yes, nobody you, is working into the central bank to go and collect... Yes, but you, you, you just and become heard, overnight. You, you just the heard, from Mr. I mean, we have stopped that. Mr. Falano, whom you just said is not a politician, recently released a statement uh, asking the federal government to come clean on this issue of subsidy because now we understand subsidy is back 
and that the federal government is paying as much or, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a process of under-recovery. But, you know, what we now have is a situation whereby subsidy of at least a trillion naira every month is being paid. Uh, to who or how is okay. unclear, okay. but we know that this is not the price okay. at which, you know, uh, 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 petrol is landing in the country. And there are big questions on what is happening with the yeah. refineries. Mope, we have reduced importation of fuel to about 50%. You know that for a fact? I know that for a fact. Uh, I mean, how because much? Can you say precisely you see, how, how many well, liters were imported? I, I cannot say because I'm not in that industry. Yeah, but you said but that what I can tell you, yes, is because there are some local refineries now Dangote refinery and a host of other smaller refineries that are working. I think what we need to do, I've said it before and I will repeat myself, the government needs to communicate more, engage Nigerians more. You talk about subsidy. Mr. Falano knows, and we all know because we see it on, on the pages of newspapers, on TV, on radio every day. The, um, the, the the rate of uh, crude, the price of crude in dollars every day. And if our money, the Naira has lost so much value and crude is dollarized, evidently there must be a cushion somewhere. Then to what extent is that cushioning being done? I can't speak to that. It's somebody who is representing the government that can address that. But okay. my common sense tells me that there is a gap that because of the pain in the country, the government cannot allow that lacuna to be left unfilled. Hence, government may chip in some amount of money to fill in that gap. Don't you think that there needs to be transparency in that regard? I do believe that that needs to be communicated, no doubt about that. That is why it is very important to take the people along step by step, particularly in such area. But in the area of security, it's mm -hmm. difficult to come on television or engage people in strategies that the government is deploying or well, planning to of course deploy not. we don't expect to them resolve to, that. But to speak on the about issue the strategies of the economy i yeah. do agree with you that the government should be as transparent as they can possibly be Ayo. i totally well thank you chamberlain well uh, ambassador you know one of the issues that you agreed with mark were on is that of security and you underscored the fact that security needs to be improved upon for us to have the kind of economy that we want. But you know, there is always a background to everything. Um, we have been hearing of cases of kidnappings as far back as say 2009 or even before that. But it got to a head in 2014 that attracted the whole world. You were in um, Minister of State for Defense in 2014 and it was about the same time in 2014 that the Boko Haram insurgency saw to the, to the abduction of the Chibok school girls. Uh, and now you're saying that, and that dust hasn't quite settled. The insecurity of that time seems to ship has shape shifted up until this moment that we are talking about now. So, what have we missed between then and now? What insight can you give us, particularly of things that have passed in the 2014 saga in particular? Since you were minister of state at some point in that year, what exactly happened, and what have we missed? that we've not been able to track down these insecurity issues until this very moment. Uh, thank you uh, very much. If I speak to that, oh, okay, you are still, I can't hear you anymore. But please go ahead. If I speak to the issue that you raise, this country we born, and Nigerians, we, we, we cry what led to that unfortunate incident of that kidnapping. But as a statesman, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but I will send a poster to you to take 200 and something 
girls we require x number of buses to take 200 and something restless young girls without being seen without being heard will take more than a genius to put together i will leave the rest to your interpretation now as per where we are, I am totally convinced with the steps that the president is taking and has taken so far. And I do believe that he has put competent people in that area of challenge. Nuhu Ribadu has a proven track record in terms of dedication and loyalty to his job, I do believe this time will not be different. Well, Ambassador... And I've seen the effort... My, my apologies for butting in. The, um, just, just a second, Ambassador. You know... I, I have the, seen the, 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 Please, let me finish this thought. Let me finish this thought. Okay. Please, if you allow me, I don't want go to ahead. forget please go ahead. this, please. And I have also, you are writing something. I don't have anything to write with. So I'm just, you know, talking based on the question you are asking me. And I have seen the effort of the, the military. What I would love is a situation where we reorganize the country in the true sense of reorganization. I see the police, when I saw on TV yesterday, was it yesterday that I saw when the police said, they should stop uh, using uh, POS at police station. That was disgraceful. It's not new. Some of us who are close to the grassroots, this has been in existence for quite a long time. And what the police has done is to shift the location of operation because they are not going to stop. You see, you just don't come out, any serious organization don't just come out and make statements that are unreasonable. You make a good example of those who are doing it. You do a dummy transaction. If you are told, if I were to, if I were to be IGP today and I'm told that this is going on at police stations, I'm sure you must be, have been aware because it's been in service forever. If I'm told that this is what is happening, in my police station, I will set up a dummy transaction where those individuals who are doing it, whether they are 20, they are 40, they are, are arrested and punished severely. That is a statement that will stop it. Not just by issuing a, a statement on the, the pages of newspaper and uh, on television, and then that will resolve everything. No! It's like the immigration office. They say the you pay X amount into the bank. Next door to every passport office in Nigeria, you have all these officers, they have their own agents there collecting money from people before they can obtain their passports. Are you telling me that the security cannot see that? Mm. And the police cannot see that? They do. Well, so, you, the so, only question you will ask yourself is that is this being done in Kohut? Mm. Well, I don't have answers to that. Well, th th those, those issues that, that you have raised, my, my apologies, yes, th th those issues yes. that you have raised are quite significant and, and you know, very important. However, speaking to the security issues again, is that, I mean, as you have said, if we do not resolve these insecu insecurity issues, production might be a challenge. And I, it's only natural to imagine how come the states are not able to take the gauntlet? A few of them have come out to say, look, we know the people that are behind this insecurity. One state governor, I don't remember which one in particular, and I think it was either Cardinal Zampara, that was, had said, look, we know the people behind this particular, uh, I think it was the Dapchi, Dapchi children, school children as well. We know the people that were behind these things and that we can name names. We never heard any name. Just recently, also, Minister of uh, Solid Minerals, uh, Mr. Delelake, came out and said, look, the people who are behind some of these insecurity issues, they are powerful Nigerians. So 
one wonders then if these issues are known if these people are known how come we have not been able to arrest the situation and continue to put the lives of people in jeopardy the front page of daily trust newspaper this morning talked about more than a hundred women who have been abducted and guess what as mark West said this morning we all we hear is news so is it that this issue is intractable we we are not a truthful nation. I mean, most of us are not truthful. Let's be honest with ourselves. We are not truthful. If we can be truthful for once, things will get better. I'm glad you raised the issue of governance. You see, before I address that, let me say this. I've been saying it and I will repeat myself. The more we worship people in government, the less value we get. I repeat, the more we worship people in government, the more value, the less value you get. Now, let's talk about the issue of governance. I am not being, uh, I'm not playing favorism here. In fairness, some governors have done outstanding job. And I will, to a reasonable extent, I'm not saying all, and I'm not saying he has also, is perfect. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to a reasonable extent, I will give kudos to the governor of Lagos State for what he is doing and what he has done. And to a, reason, to a reasonable and also to a large extent, I will give kudos to Alex Oti for partnering with BAT to launch that laudable and that legacy project of power, uh, uh, power project in, uh, in Aba that was launched last week. These are impactful projects that even before it's taken off, you can tell the kind of impact that such will make. If you go to Lagos today, the blue line is working. This is what the Stopped. That's why the Yoruba people, I give kudos to our, 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 our progenitors when they said, Dali, Fawu, Agu, Seini, Oh, Lekwakada, Rada, that you can only slow the progress of man, but you cannot reverse it. We celebrated the blue line, unfortunately, as. Uh, uh, God will have it. It's the same person that stopped it, that commissioned it. And we just celebrated Red Line. And when you talk about Lagos as a good example of what is possible in Nigeria, they say, ah, Lagos is too small. But I make bold to say when George Bush Jr. was president in America, there was an educational program in the city of Chicago that was powered by a Democratic Party. He embraced it and used it nationally as an, as an example okay. of the direction their education should take. Our governors, we must reorganize Nigeria to give governors more responsibilities and also through laws from National Assembly okay. compel the governors to make local government a living tier of government. All right, we, we need to anchor. Uh, that way, the country can you know, make progress. Let me tell you, everybody's looking up to Abuja. We should be able to look up to our local government you know, chairman, look of, up to uh, our governors for some of these solutions that the federal government cannot solve. Yeah, and, and that and is why fact, you know they talk about true federalism. I agree. Some of these words that we, the constitution we need to go that we've been reviewing every year, you know, for financial gains. As a matter of fact. Should many, be, the opportunity should be used many are also to the change view. the country once and for all. Give the local government responsibility, recruit good Nigerians. We hear you, Ambassador. We track oh, record to serve there. there. A number and of people will... Governors so we, we need should to, be we, we responsible you. We hear you. for some of these things that are going on. All right. Not just federal, 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 as if that is the only tier of government we that we have you. in Nigeria. And in other words, I mean, the states will have no excuse whatsoever not to follow the... Abia 
power project example. It takes only three years, as Professor Bart told us. So we're hoping that they, of course, they have all that information, and we look forward to all of that happening. But I want to thank you for coming on. Ambassador Musli Obaniko Rufoma, Nigeria's ambassador to Ghana, also a senator, and also a former Minister of State for Defense. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for inviting me.